Well folks, winter is upon us. The water's dropping clearer and it's time to dust off that waggler tackle. Those fish are backing off, but there's still some brilliant sport to be enjoyed if you get your tactics right. Come on, let's go fishing. There we are. One of the most important considerations when choosing a peg for waggler fishing is wind direction. You either want no wind or the wind off your back. Now you'll see today it's flat calm in front of me and that means I'll be able to present that flow absolutely beautifully. On the other lake you can probably just about see it over the bank there, the wind's really hitting that and that's because behind us we've got a nice bank which is offering us a little bit of protection from the elements. So always pick a peg where either the wind's off your back or if there's no wind at all, it really doesn't matter. So why fish a waggler? I think it gives two key advantages over any other method. It lets you fish a light rig through the water and catch fish at all levels as your bait falls, unlike a feeder, but it lets you fish past the range of the pole. So today we'll be fishing anywhere between sort of 13 and 18 meters, depending on the wind or what we find when we start plumbing up. So, I think it gives you the ability to fish through the water and it lets you fish at a little bit more range than you can with a pole and also of course without that shadow of the pole over the fish's head which in clear water conditions like we've got at this time of year is really important. Let me just run you through really quickly the tackle that I'm using. So it's a 13 foot uh, waggler rod, you want a soft or light waggler for winter silverfish action, 3000 size reel. Now first really important piece of advice I'm going to give you use as light a mainline as you can get away with. This is two and a half pound Maxima mainline. The beauty of a light mainline is it casts easier and it lets your float present better in challenging conditions. When you get a ripple on the water or any wind, a lighter line holds your float better. So that's that. Moving down now, I'm just gonna slide the rod up the bank here till I get to the top end of the rig and the float. Right. Now, obviously I mentioned that light main line. That's really important. But then what I do is I always have a slightly thicker leader. And by leader, all I mean is the line where the float and the rig itself actually go. So you'll see about a foot above the float, there's a little knot there, a little loop to loop. And I've attached some 017 mil reflow power line onto the two pound, two and a half pound Maxima. And this is where all my terminal tackles mounted. So we'll start with my waggler. Uh, that's a two, two gram loaded Drennan insert crystal waggler, nice fine tip on that for sensitivity and I've mounted it between uh, two float stops below and one above just to keep it in place. A lot of people fish big ugly groups of locking shot around the waggler to shot the float. I don't. What I do is have a little neat wrap of electrician solder, solder around the waggler, this stuff. Um, you can get this off Amazon or from any electrics store. It's brilliant because it lets you really dot that float down without the need for those big, ugly dropping shot. Now, down the line, I do have some shot as well, so we'll just slide down to them. And I've just got four number nines. It's about seven foot deep where we're fishing, so about seven foot in depth is the depth of fishing, shall I say. So four number nines spread out, give that bait a really slow fall through the water, which is exactly what I'm looking for. At the bottom of that leader, I've tied a very small micro swivel, and this is where my hook length attaches to. Now, the reason for that is a really common problem if you don't have that swivel is spin ups in your line. So, when you're reeling in with small fish or double maggot on the hook, for example, it spins up and you can end up with wind knots and all sorts of problems in your line. That swivel acts as your final dropper and eradicates those problems of spin ups. Hook length wise, I always like quite a long hook length for the waggler when it comes to silverfish. silverfish. This is a 15 inch um, up length here. I fish 15 or 12 inch, depending on how the fish are feeding. Hook wise, it's a size 18 Guru um, F1 pellet, uh, and that's an 09 hook length. So the whole setup's fairly light, apart from that robust uh, leader, which just helps keep tangles to a minimum and give a nice slow fall through the water. So a simple setup, but a few key things that help cut down on tangles. So 
So that's the first fish of the day, and it looks like a nice Messingham skimmer. Now this lake, Little Swan, is absolutely stuffed with fish like this. And I'll tell you something, as it drops clearly, you definitely find that the bigger fish, like these skimmers, do sit further and further away from the bank. Now, that one's absolutely nailed that maggot, you can see. Just in the in the top lip there, let's get it out. Gorgeous fish. Hopefully, there'll be plenty more of these to come. And perhaps, just perhaps, some of the bigger Messingham Crucians, F1s, and there's some really interesting exotic fish in here and we'll see if they play ball a little bit later. So, another nice fish on. I don't know whether this is a big roach, a good perch or an F1, but it's up a fairly dogged fight. I'll land this and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the technique that we're using today when it comes to waggler fishing. I'm a big believer in keeping everything as simple as it can be. The worst thing you can do and when anglers run into trouble with this kind of fishing is when they overcomplicate things, when they start, oh it's a lovely big crucian, wow, messing them you know it's full of fish like this. If you've never been really is worth coming and having a try because I mean, just look at that great big gold i think it's a crucian i'm not a, a fish scientist it could be a a brown gold fish or something like that but that to me looks like a, a proper crucian it's absolutely nailed that that maggot but look at them what better fish to catch in winter than them gorgeous so on to my technique, how I'm fishing the waggler today and how I'm really trying to keep life easy for myself. So, I've got a confession to make before we start folks, I am very dyspraxic, I am clumsy, I'm not the most accurate, so the only way that a method with a bit of finesse in it like the waggler is going to work for me is if I keep things dead simple and do things logically. So the first thing I do when I get to my peg, before I decide where I'm going to fish with the waggler is this, pick up the catapult and fire some bait in. And the reason I do that is I want to know how far I can comfortably fire maggots and that is going to determine how far I will fish. There's absolutely no point whatsoever putting a big waggler on and casting it to the horizon if you can't feed any bait there. So looking at that, I can comfortably feed 14, 16 metres out. I know I can cast the waggler that far, so that's how far I'm going to fish. The key to an accurate cast or a, a fluent cast that doesn't tangle is fluency when it comes to this sort of fishing. So it's all got to be one motion so your line doesn't ever form a loop or wrap over your rod. So come back over the shoulder and out we go. We feather it just before it hits the surface of the water and you could see there that the hook bait flew out past the waggler and that's what you want to happen every time. I then reeled in quite sharply with a rod tip under the water four times and what that does is it sinks the line between your rod tip and your waggler which just stops the wind from moving it too much. I'm now watching the float and I'm seeing those drop a shot register on that sensitive insert of the waggler so you'll notice when it first hit the water there was quite a bit, oh that's another bite and another fish on, when that first hit the water there was quite a bit of bristle of antenna showing and as it settled, it's a little skimmer and we'll slip the net under him as it settled we could see those droppers register and obviously then we saw the bite little skimmers like this if that were any other species of fish I would have swung it but I just know what these these skimmers are like at this sort of size, they often come off the hook given any opportunity whatsoever so I always like the swinger and another one that's absolutely nailed the hook bait that tells me that they're really eating things confidently which is how I want it when it comes to comes to this sort of fishing. In terms of depths I mentioned obviously I'm fishing it's actually just touching bottom about 30 meters out where I'm 
or, or 40 meters out, shall I say, where I'm fishing um, with the depth I've got this waggler set at. But what I'll do today is play about as we go through the day. I always start off with this by getting some bites and if you need to do anything, if you're not getting any indications, put more line on so you're fishing over depth and, and wait, that was a little dink. And that's another fish. What's this one then? Might be another skimmer looking at it. Yes. Another lovely skimmer. And that bite came, I don't really notice when that bite came, but that came just as that bait settled on the bottom. So I think my theory about the fish following that bait down is probably not far off the truth. So we'll stick with what we're doing for now. Another cast. Single red maggot. Obviously with that lovely Sensate powder on it, which I definitely think brings a few faster bites on tough days like this. It's important as well just to let you notice what I do when I cast, but just before that flow hits the water, I dab my finger on the spool, which slows the line down and basically flicks flicks the hook bait past the float. So it stops the float. That's a bit better with the feeding. It stops the float and flicks the hook bait past, so everything lands in a nice straight line, and it gives that lovely uh, fall through the water. If you can just stop that float like that, that's the ideal scenario. Ironically, the bigger the float that you use, the easier it is to do that. If we fish today with like a, a bigger waggler, would be even more in control. But I do like a light float because it does, I think, uh, give a little bit better presentation when you're fishing through the water as we are today. So, here's the maggots that I'm fishing with today, which have been prepared in conjunction with the Sensate powder. You can see a lovely vivid red. And here are those self same maggots as I got them this morning from the tackle shop, so before the Sensate powder was added, and you can clearly see the difference in colour. So, let me show you how I turn these maggots into these. So, the first thing I always do when preparing maggots, of any, uh, in any way really, whether it's for just general fishing or whether I'm adding bait to them, is to make sure they're clean. Often they are from a tackle shop, but I always just like to chuck them on a fine riddle and get rid of any maize or sawdust that might be on them from the shop. To make that powder take to these maggots as quickly as possible, I am actually going to just put a very slight amount of moisture on them. So I'm just going to wet my hand, literally, that's all I'm doing, you see the hands wet, and mix it into the maggots. And you can see already, they're becoming a slightly darker colour. Just moistening them slightly will help that powder to take to the maggots. All right, then we're going to add some Sensate powder. How much to use? I tell everybody to use one of these caps full of powder for every one pint of maggots. There, there's probably about a third of a pint of maggots, so I'm just going to guesstimate roughly a third of a cap, about, about that much, I'd say. Obviously, if you want more potent maggots, you can add more, or if you want less of an effect, you can add less. And the next stage is just to mix them around. I'm going to get my hands dirty on this, because they're already dirty today, and I'm just going to really hold that still and mix that powder into them maggots. That's taking on that bait lovely. And if you look, if I hold some up, you can see that powder's all over them maggots and they are going a lovely vivid shade of red. And you can see if I put that next to the ones I prepared earlier, they're now that lovely deep dark shade of red that fish seem to absolutely love. And most importantly, they've got that sensate flavour all over them and that'll leak out as the maggots fall through the water and pull fish into your peg. All of these are the Drennan Crystal Ranger Wagglers. And to be honest, for most um, commercial or still water work anyway, these are all I use. They've got this nice bit of loading at the bottom, which obviously takes out the need for any sort of big amounts of solder or locking shot around them. Um, they're just a really, really nice, well-made waggler. So there's, there's really two things you need to look at. The size of the waggler and the makeup of the tip. Now, you'll notice a lot of wagglers are straight, like this one here is a perfect example of a straight waggler with um, no sort of insert in the top. 
The advantage of these is obviously they're more visible, especially when you're fishing at range. Um, and also, they've got that bit more resistance. So say, for example, the lake was towing and you wanted to drag a bit of line on the bottom, that slightly more buoyant bristle just helps hold in the surface tension. So you can actually drag some line on the bottom and present a bait a little bit more stably. Uh, on rivers, likewise, if you're dragging a bit of uh, line on the bottom fishing on a river, I'd always use uh, a straight waggler. An insert waggler gives you more sensitivity. So you lose that extra buoyancy and that extra sort of uh, robustness in terms of your presentation, but you gain sensitivity. So like for today, when we're casting in, hoping for bites fairly quickly off shy biting fish, an insert waggler is always my go-to choice. And you'll notice there's different size inserts you can get um, with different color tips to suit any light conditions or just how sensitive you want that waggler to be. And this is an example of a, a much thicker um, waggler, straight waggler, which you might use, for example, when you're fishing shallow for carp or something like that, where you want the fish to actually hook themselves against the float. So it's all about really the buoyancy of the waggler, the, the makeup of uh, the tip. Common sizes today I'm fishing, as I said, with a two gram waggler. I carry wagglers up to four gram with me for most commercial work. I rarely go above four gram when fishing on, on still waters. Um, if you need much heavier than that, um, obviously you're, you're into other territory. I always think you're probably going to fish a feeder or, or a bomb. But um, yeah, two to four gram covers 90% of what you're doing. Um, one thing I would always advise people to do though is fish slightly heavier in terms of float size than you need to. That'll just allow you to, pass, to cast past where you're fishing and reel back into your bait. I'd always rather be doing that than trying to force a cast with a waggler that's too light because that is when you end up with problems. I've just hooked something much bigger than the silver fish and maybe odd F1 that I was sort of targeting. Now I don't know whether I'm going to get this in. Um, on light tackle is always a risk it'll break you. I've obviously only got that 09 hook length on. There's a few things you can do to stack the odds in your favour. Obviously I've got this clutch on the, on the reel here sat really nice and light. It's just trickling line off. I always like to just take my time until I know where the fish is hooked as well because it's not uncommon in winter to foul up the odd carp on the waggler. I think though the way this one's fighting, it is in the mouth, it's took that maggot hook bait and we know, yeah that's a good fish, we know that all fish eat maggots, even really big angry carp like that, I mean look at that, that is taking some line but I'm not worried because we've got a lot of open water in front of us here it's a big carp that I've just seen it come to the surface about 20 meters out there will we land it I don't know we'll have a, have a go always use the bend of the rod you'll see the way I'm playing this the rod's either relatively high or to the side sort of steering the fish where I want it to come but always make sure you've got a little bit of bend in the rod so if it does lunge you've got the action of the rod just to cushion it and hopefully stop your line from breaking but it might be uh, it might have another couple of runs in it in it yet i think this fish it's one of those big angry messingham carp and i didn't bank on them on them feeding today on this peg to be honest especially not on light waggler gear like this on 09 suplex fluorocarbon and an 18 f1 pellet but we're just going to take our time and if we're lucky we'll add a nice big bonus to the net for the catch shot as i said just use the bend of the rod have that clutch there so if you need to let line off you can nodding its head it's definitely in the mouth this fish I think we might have a chance let's just see yes yeah, so oh, it's a lovely common look at that it's on the surface now so when they come up like that you can give them a little bit more obviously don't pull too hard just 
it's that balance between playing them safely so you don't snap you don't want to give them too much stick when they come close because you don't want them to dive under a pallet or anything so you've just got to uh, get the balance between pulling and being careful correct just take your time that's the biggest lesson use the bend of the rod use the drag on the reel and if you have any luck at all you'll uh, you'll land the fish I fish a lot of commercial silverfish matches this time of year and we always laugh about the number of carp that we hook on these matches when they don't count compared let's get that yes there we are compared to what you hook if you fish for them I definitely think these light lines small hooks baits like maggots especially with the sensate powder on it they do mean you hook more carp probably than you would if you were fishing for them with proper tackle because you'd never target fish of this size with tiny little hooks and light hook lengths like that but that's a lovely Messingham carp let's slip him in the net and let's uh, get back out there and see what else we can catch Well folks, it's another nice fish. The sun's dropped behind the trees. Now the only problem with these winter days is they are short winter days. It's only probably just after three o'clock and already it's going a little bit dark and we're going to have to think about wrapping it up in a minute or two. But what an epic, epic day I've had today. That's a little cruise in there. I just want to talk about a couple of things that I've done today in the later part of the session as as the fishing say oh that's just looked in the side by the looks of it but look at them absolutely beautiful fish a couple of things i've done just to improve my efficiency and catch a bit quicker basically i was getting a few problems with a uh, roach holding the rig up as it went through the water and you know earlier on i showed you that solder that i'd wrapped around the float well, what i was able to do with that is take it off and put three more number eight droppers on so i've now basically got a lot more weight down the line which just helps get that bait down a bit quicker because i'm finding the quality fish the crucians the skimmers the f1s etc are sat underneath those little roach which are higher up in the water column so i've just basically got the weight down a little bit quicker another thing i've done and i'm not sure whether you can tell on on camera or not but i've actually brought the fish a little bit closer into me i'm now only fishing probably 12 to 13 meters out on that waggler probably 13 meters where obviously i started off quite a lot further out than that and i've done that deliberately because i can feed more accurately i can feed tighter at that distance which just helps concentrate the fish and means again i can be a little bit more selective in what i catch i feel because when you group the bait tight more tightly i think the better fish oh, that's another another nice fish the better fish just get to that bait a little bit quicker but it's been an absolutely epic session i just wish we've got a couple of more hours of light because as you can see i've just had a cruise and i've got a lovely big skimmer on now it's just been awesome awesome fishing dead simple a few pints of maggots a waggler a waggler rod and obviously i talked about the tackle i've used but not very much at all in terms of the setup and i've just caught a fish pretty much every put in all day crucians carp lovely skimmers like that and uh, what better way i'm going to say to spend a winter's day it's been absolutely epic and proof i think that the sensate powder does absolutely no harm whatsoever to your chances catching fish and when you see how it behaves in the tank like I showed you you can understand why I think I'm 
quite a lot of other people think it actually increases your chances of catching big weights of fish. It's a fantastic product. I hope you've enjoyed the video, folks, and I look forward to seeing you on the bank soon.